Welcome, everyone, to another Jags podcast, episode 14. We're just plugging along, pumping out the episodes left and right, and that is why we are the number one off-season Jaguars podcast, and soon to be, in about 10 weeks, uh, the number one in-season Jaguars podcast. I'm saying it right now. Oh, yeah. We're excited about tonight. we got a lot of things to talk about. Before we get to all that, we want to remind everyone, again, that we are on Twitter at Another Jags Pod. We are on Facebook and Instagram at Another Jags Podcast. And we want to say, look, we don't, we're not on social media for our own health. We want to hear back from you all. If you are listening to our episodes and you want to have us talk about something, let us know. We're open to talk about whatever. This is a fan-based podcast. We're fans and so are you. So let's talk about these things together. So just throwing that out there. If you'd like for us to discuss certain things, let us know and we'll try our best to include them in an episode. We have with us tonight our normal crew. Joey, how are you doing tonight? Man, doing really good, man. Good. You got your San Diego Padres hat on. I do. Looking and fresh. if they uh, stomp the Braves once again, my lifelong Padre love will be uh, confirmed. By lifelong, you mean like, what is it going on, 10 days now? Uh, yeah, actually, I think two weeks. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good. All right. Due to the cool hat. I'll support anyone that uh, follows baseball. Jason, how you doing? Oh, man, I'm on pins and needles with Florida State and the softball national championship game. I I don't know how I'm going to sleep tonight. I know, or, or focus on this episode. That's yeah. I just listen. I, I don't. I don't know. I, I mean, know. prior to you, you, you got to focus. You got to want it. It's all about the underhand pitching. Hey, FSU is up eight to three right now. Mm. Uh, they're on their way. Wow. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> what do you say after that? I don't. Like, really, like, how do you go from there? Nothing. I know. That was, that's the point. <laughs> that was, that was the point. <laughs> Robert. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Any knee update you want to give us on the uh, sprain MCL? Nah, just waiting on an MRI, and I'll be good after that. So Okay. You won't be, but that's I okay. I won't be, yeah, but no, It's still a long road ahead. But that's okay. Uh, dedication to the podcast. We appreciate it. Uh, I'm doing good tonight. We have um, some a couple things we're going to be talking about. If you haven't been listening to any of our episodes recently, what we have decided to do during this long stretch of no football offseason, we're in the dog days of summer when there's – you know, not a ton going on in the, in terms of NFL news. What we're going to be doing is dissecting position groups at, on each episode. We started two episodes ago. We On episode 12, we talked about our secondary, that being our corners and our safeties. Last week, we talked about tight ends. And tonight, we're going to be talking about linebackers. So we're excited about that. And uh, we're also going to be talking about where the Jaguars rank on ESPN in terms of their FPI slash basically the Vegas odds and what they think about the Jaguars. We're going to save that for the end. But uh, tonight, again, is going to be about our linebackers, uh, three spots. And as always, we're going to hand it off to Jason first. Before we get into the names and our expectations, just to discuss the position as a whole, what they do, where they are in the field, how they play in terms of the defensive strategy that the Jaguars uh have so jason i'm going to hand it off to you and just kind of set the stage for us if you will this is my favorite part of the podcast the education portion yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you the you talking portion or just yeah the, yeah, okay, yeah that's why i listen to it so much <laughs> but the jaguars run a your standard 4-3 defense meaning they have three linebackers on the field in their base formation first down coming out of the half starting the game four defensive linemen and three linebackers now if when they come on their nickel package they'll take one of the linebackers off and bring an extra defensive back, and that'll be a 4-2-5 formation. But we're going to talk about the three for right now. Your middle linebacker is sometimes called your Mike linebacker, and that guy is in the middle of the two, and he's always in the middle of the field. And his responsibility, he has to be the most versatile player on your team because he's going to play against the run and against the pass, and he's usually responsible for calling the defense, calling the plays, Usually he's the guy that's wearing the electronic headset and his helmet uh, to communicate with the defense coordinator. So he's going to call the plays, and he's kind of the captain of the defense. That guy traditionally for the last 40 years was a, was a big Paul Puzlesny-type guy, but you're starting to see that change now to a more athletic hybrid-type player. On the weak side, which is the side opposite of the tight end, Okay, so that's why you'll see the, the linebacker switch when the other team goes in motion because in the defense, usually they want their weak side linebacker to be on the side that the tight end is not. Which is what we discussed last week. If you go back, Jason talked about the tight end is usually is referred to as the strong, uh, strong, the strong side. side. Okay, right. I was paying attention. Right, yeah. yeah. So your weak side linebacker um, has his set of skills. Is he has to be able to basically what's called set the edge, meaning always keep his outside shoulder and hand free in a block and be able to 
bring anything back inside or make a tackle. So if he gets blocked, his if he gets pushed back, then the cuts the the backside cut will be there wide open for days for the running back. The strong side linebacker, sometimes called the Sam, um, that's that's a guy who's always lined up with the tight end, and he is usually the guy making the play against the run because most of the time the offense runs behind the tight end. So that linebacker usually is free, has to find the gap the running back's going for and try to meet him in that gap. So usually that guy is like a, a bulkier, not as fast guy. He's called your Sam, your strong side backer. And that's the role where we have our, our vacancy. So Miles Jack plays your middle linebacker, Mike. Telvin Smith plays your outside linebacker or your Will. And then that strong side backer or the Sam, that's the position that's up for grabs right now. But that's kind of an, an overview of of what each of the positions do in, in our 4-3 Todd Wash defense. Okay, so before we go any further, and thank you for explaining that, let's say really quick, we uh, you mentioned that when we go to a nickel, we take that linebacker out and we go to two linebackers. What is the percentage of plays on defense only where we will see three linebackers on the field? Well, if we look at last year's stats, it gives us a good indication of what we'll see. Paul Puzlesny was the he was the middle linebacker, but he technically lined up to the strength, and he came off the he was that strong side backer, and he came off the field when we went to nickel. And Paul Puzlesny played in forty six percent of the defensive snaps. Okay, so actually less than half of the snaps we have three linebackers. So it's the majority of the defensive snaps we don't see that third linebacker. Instead, we see the nickel corner. But to put it the most simply as possible. You're basically subbing out your nickel corner for your third linebacker. Right. Those are your, those are basically our two different defensive schemes. Um, so you have DJ Hayden playing nickel, and when he's not on the field, we're going to have, and this is the big question and probably the topic of the night, Blair Brown. You know, we're assuming is going to be that linebacker. Would you all agree? I mean, that's kind of where it stands right now. You kind of have to agree because that's really all there is. I mean, he's the only guy anybody's ever heard of, and he has like zero stats last year. Everybody else – Deeper on the depth chart, I mean, I don't even know who these guys are. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could look them up and read their names, but it would I could read any names. It, from exactly. Anywhere. So it, again, we talked about this last week. Is it our weakest position spot on the team? I mean, I have to say yes. Right now, I say, wow, it's yeah. I would have to say yes too. I, I don't know if I could call it necessarily a weak on the defense. Is that what you're saying? The no, weakest on the whole team. Are, on the whole so team? How about this on offense and defense? We'll we'll ah. not special teams. It's hard to say because, I mean, when you have two people like Telvin and Jack there, it's hard to say that's your weakest. Yeah, I agree. No, I no, mean, no. Yeah, I don't, I don't, weakest position group or weakest position? I say right group. Group. Oh, group? I would uh, say our wide receivers currently because we really don't know where they're at. We, I mean, obviously we have Cole who did a great job last year, but we don't 100% know he's going to come back out and do the same thing last year. D.D. Westbrook, we hope he's going to do better than he did last year. He flashed a couple of times, but that was about it. Marquis Lee, Lee is a stud, though. He, I, Marquise I would say Lee's he's the real deal. I don't, yeah, I don't, he really I, is. A real, number, would, a real number two, maybe. Yeah, he, this year will maybe. prove if he's maybe. a stud or not. Again, we don't have anyone proven as yeah. Actually, I would say instead of wide receiver, which I get all your points, you're making valid points, Robert. What about quarterback? Mm. Is that is that our is that our weakest position? I thought position? about that, but because after have, Bortles, who you know on linebacker at least you have one guy that made the top 100 on the NFL Network right. for whatever that's worth. Miles Jack's going to be a, I mean, everyone that plays with him says he's going to be a great player. Right. Well, I I, I was going to get to this later, but since you brought him up, you had said last week uh, when we were talking about tight ends, Jason, that James O'Shaughnessy is your expected breakout player of the year next year offensive Miles, offensive oh okay are, are you gonna <laughs> steal my thunder because <laughs> miles jack is is mine i i really uh, for the team i won't say offense or defense but mile if i had to pick one player going into next year that i think is going to make an incredible leap is miles jack i mean i think if we talk about groups though like to be on point with that yes quarterback for sure but linebacker i mean that's next because if you look at injuries i mean if yep. blake goes down in trouble if any of our stud, if Telvin or Miles Jack goes down, that's, dude, that's we're, true. We're, we're wrecked. Mm -hmm. I mean, wide receiver, if a couple of those guys get hurt, yeah, we've got guys to plug in. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I think those two are by far our weakest points. Well, I mean, I think it really comes down to the play of that strong side backer. We know what we're going to get out of Telvin Smith and Miles Jack. Those guys are, are great players. 
I mean, Pazlesny played in 46% of the snaps. If you account for injuries, we probably were in nickel closer to 60%. So really you're only going to see that guy on 40% of the snaps. But that's still a, a good amount. And, that's a good portion. It is. And, and that's a big part of your team. And it's it's important, guys. First down, you know right. that that's where we see our three linebackers are. First down, you know, run, obvi- obvious pass play. Uh, that's when they're going to bring in Hayden, our nickel corner, and take out that third linebacker. Uh, so yeah, it is important. And I'll say it again. Look, we we said this almost. Well, it started off kind of as a joke, but the more we talked about it, the more we realized this is this is probably their best possibility is bring back pause. Get on the phone and call him. And uh, since then, even local uh, radio host uh, Hayes Carline has said the same thing on the radio the other day talking about it. And I just wonder, would they consider picking up the phone and giving him a call and saying, give us another year? And just one more year. I have to give you, like, mad props for that because you literally were the first person I ever heard that said that. And then it came out. And not only that, but, like, Telvin Smith said that. I know it was kind of like joking, like a, like a sidebar. But when one of your guys, like, on the field and OTAs is saying that, that – if I'm Blair Brown, I'm like, dude, what the heck, man? Yeah. I mean, that, do you ever say well. anything to the media full jokingly though? If you're tell, tell no, him a smart guy. He right. knows. He knows what he, he's saying. He knows what he's saying. That, that's like a, throwing it out there as a feeler. Like, come yeah. on, like, well, can this happen? Last year during OTAs and everything, he talked about how he didn't think the defense looked good. He thought they needed a lot more work. So, I mean, he's never been one to really hold back when he thinks that something, whether it's to kind of get into the other guy's heads to get him to work harder, or if it's just speaking his mind, be like, hey, we're not where we need to be at. He's never been shy to say what he feels. I think the coaching staff is just bigger on Blair Brown than we are. It's funny. John Osher wrote an article yesterday about Blair Brown. It was so convenient for us. Yeah. <laughs> but he talked about how Blair Brown – played weak side linebacker last season and he's moving over to strong side this year and he talked about how Blair Brown said his his keys are different what he's looking for at the snap meaning his keys meaning like at the snap you watch a player or maybe like a triangle you're not necessarily watching the ball so if you're a weak side linebacker you're watching the back side of the play because if the running back or the quarterback bootlegs out or cuts back then he's your responsibility if you're a strong side backer you're keying the tight end if the tight end comes up and blocks then you're coming down to fill the gap on the run if he stands up and runs for a pass route your key is now pass coverage so when you switch positions it's hard for football players to change like in their brain who they're watching at the snap and not getting your eyes caught in the backfield you're having to watch that and the ball all at the same time he's not only has he's not proven he's making a position change do you think there's any chance that Lerntre McRae like I'm, steps in and like takes over that position, or, like it jumps in front of him? I'm glad you brought that up because I think I mean he's the the times Lerntre McRae played last year he looked pretty good. I mean he graded out about 70 on PFF, which you know is what it is. He didn't play a lot of snaps, but you know I feel it, like I saw him more than Brown. No, absolutely. I don't know and why. That, I mean that's why I bring that up. If 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 you think about the games and just from a, like an eye standpoint. His name popped out more. It seems like he did more with his opportunities, but he seems to be behind Brown in the depth chart for some reason. Lorente McRae played 21 snaps on defense, and Blair Brown played 48 snaps on defense. So Blair Brown got a little – I mean, they, it's not a lot, but got about double. And Lorente, if you don't know, Blair Brown was drafted last year. He was from the U. Yeah, right? 2017 U. draft. 2017 draft. He's from the University of Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> oh, not Ohio University? Oh, yeah. Is that what it is? I don't even know. It is Ohio University. Lerente McCray was drafted in 2014 by the Broncos and were his third team. Last year was his first year with us. But those are going to be the two guys, you know, fighting for that spot. Yeah. I mean, go to, back to your point about the coaches being high on Blair Brown. Clearly, they must be because they didn't address the position in free agency. They basically didn't address it in the draft. They picked up Leon Jacobs, I think is his name. Uh, I mean, the what round was that? The sixth round? Sixth, yeah, out of so, uh, Wisconsin. Okay, so not a super high priority if you're waiting in the sixth round to, to pick up a linebacker. So they must know more than we do, and they I hope they do because there's not a lot for the fans to go on because he simply just wasn't out there very much last year. But we'll see. It could be the same thing we talked when we talked about the secondary a couple weeks ago with DJ Hayden. His play could could be elevated because of the corners around him Boye and Ramsey maybe they're thinking the same thing with Blair Brown playing with not only not only Miles Jack and Telvin Smith but that entire defensive line I mean that defensive line makes most linebackers jobs easier and I think and then more so 
when they're playing when you're playing alongside the two fastest linebackers in the NFL. Uh, I mean, I guess the second question with that though is is, is Miles Jack ready to be the defensive leader, and is he? comfortable enough reading offenses to be the one that that kind of guides that I mean that was kind of an issue when he first came out athleticism wise absolutely like he's light years beyond anybody but they had to kind of plug pause back in there to to make up for that because he couldn't quite get there the first year so I mean do you guys think he's ready for that yeah I think he should be able to be um, ready for it because I mean he had another year uh, with pause kind of helping him out and then on top of that, this is going to be his second year in that role. I think he's going to be able to really kind of probably in some ways without pause there, it's going to force him to step up a little bit more in that play calling role. And really when it comes down to it, he has to. He doesn't really have an option right now. I mean, Telvin obviously is the quote-unquote leader of the defense now. He's kind of assumed that role. But on field, I mean, Jack has to be. He's going to be the guy getting the play calls in his helmet He's got to be the one being able to also read the plays and figure out what's going on at any given point in time. So I thought he did a pretty good job last year. Like you said, I mean, obviously Paz was definitely a huge person to have as a backup sitting there on the field with him. But I, I think he'll step up, and I think he should do pretty well. Well, and also, he's not being asked to be the man on the defense. Yes, he's getting the coverages called into his helmet, but look at the guys around him. They don't, they don't need him – to tell them what to do. I mean, he's playing with, like, legit guys. Calais Campbell's not waiting for Miles Jack to say, what, what should I do on this? You know right. what I mean? Like, neither is Ramsey or Gibson or anybody anybody else on the defense. So it's not like he's got all this weight on his shoulders and the defense is just staring at him, you know, That's completely confused. Right. You know what I mean? So it, it, I think I think that can we can put too much stock in that aspect of that position for the Jaguars. Now, if he was playing on – you know, some team that was god awful last year, and ever, no one does know what to do. Then maybe that would be a question. But I think for the Jaguars, that's not something that we need to worry about all that much. I don't think. And his athleticism may surpass Telvin Smith's, which is like crazy to think about. No, Telvin Smith's the most athletic players. We, he had that touchdown return that was like sixty yards or sixty five yards, something like that. And it was like God. Like I mean, he used to play running back in college when mm-hmm. he was a freshman. It's like you can see that athleticism just translating so well for whatever reason miles jack always didn't never looked that big to me as what he is actually on paper which is probably good for him because it translates into that athleticism him doing stuff that a guy his size is really mm-hmm. impressive to do people don't talk either about how hard he hits oh man I mean, everyone talks about his speed and rightfully so because he is insanely fast but he hits so hard i love watching him play on the pff jaguars twitter account it says that he was one of the best coverage linebackers last season his coverage grade 85.3 ranked eighth among amongst uh linebackers and ranked second in cover snaps per target so we saw i mean he had a good season last year and that was in my opinion that was really his first season because his actual rookie year bradley had he didn't know what he was doing because he kept switching around the field he was never able to commit to a place and a position on the field last year they had him more cemented in what he was doing. And I think that showed productivity wise. I think it and I think this year is gonna be even more. So we forget that a couple months before the draft, the year he was in the in the NFL draft, they were saying he could possibly be a top five pick. And they were wondering yeah. if the Jags were gonna draft him with the first overall pick. And then the news came out about his knee and everyone got freaked out. So the Jags take Ramsey and then it's the best Jaguars draft in it in my yeah, you know ever. My time that they get him in the second round. I mean, the guy is insanely, insanely talented. And I think having last year under his belt, especially, and with Paws helping him last year, I just I expect to see him make a huge jump. Not only that, I mean, like, if you really think about it, he didn't really play all that much at all under Bradley. I mean, they for the first half of the year, people were begging to see him on the field at all. Oh, so, I mean, so, I mean, <laughs> last year was really one of his first years playing yeah, really, why, really why play jack when you got dan scooter yeah exactly, I mean, exactly. oh man <laughs> <laughs> miles jack gives you like some versatility to do what, what teams do in tampa two schemes where the middle linebacker drops and plays like that middle safety like that is it was like a new concept in like the late 90s early 2000s and because you can't run it most of your times your middle linebackers have no ability to play a middle free zone but miles jack can so you would see it like once or twice a game where Miles Jack would just drop to the middle and they would play that three deep scheme with him in the middle. And that throws off quarterbacks like 
you wouldn't even believe. Mm-hmm. It it just, I mean, seeing the guy who's <laughs> usually coming like playing seven yards in line of scrimmage, just dropping in the middle of the field. You you don't know what you're looking at anymore. No, it's it's a it's a huge advantage. We have we have two linebackers in Telvin Smith and Miles Jack that can chase down running backs and cover elite tight ends. I mean that's insane. And and what's also insane is that we've been talking about linebackers for well over ten minutes, and Joey has yet to bring up his favorite, his current favorite Jaguar, in Telvin Smith. Well, I mean you, you just mentioned you just all around. It. It's, it's like given at this point. I mean. I'm going to have a Smith jersey this, for this next <laughs> season coming up. I mean, it's a given. He is like, he's the stud. He's the leader. He's the most outspoken. He's the best player in the field, in my opinion, other than Jalen uh, on the defense. One thing I, I've kind of looked at being a Gator fan is, and nobody's mentioned, is Dante Fowler. Is there any chance with his athleticism that he gets mixed into the linebacker role? Ooh, that's a wrinkle. Because he played a hybrid linebacker at Florida. Yeah. I mean, Jason, this might be a question for you. I mean, I don't, I mean, he is. He's not a starter. The only thing that made it hybrid was the fact that he the coaches didn't put him in a three point stance. Okay, so Actually, he basically played that same defensive end role because he still does come off the edge for the Jaguars in the nine technique, which is like outside shoulder of a tight end, even when there's no tight end there. And so he would do that at Florida just from stand up because he was just you know that much more athletic than everyone in college. But when he got in the NFL, he they put his hand in the dirt. Am I wrong, or was it last year, or was it when Bradley was there? Didn't they drop Ngakwe back a few times, and like he w- he would line up, and then he dropped back into coverage multiple I saw, times. I was, yeah, so that's called a zone blitz. Yeah, that's where a linebacker will blitz, and then the defensive end will drop to a zone. The linebacker would usually okay. do, and that throws off quarterbacks a lot too. I did see Ngakwe do that quite a bit. Yeah, I, and he almost had an interception, I believe, against. I think it was the Patriots where he batted a ball up in the air and then they almost intercepted it. It'd be interesting seeing Fowler do that because he might not be, but I feel like he's quicker. At least on uh, eye test, he looks faster than Ngakwe. So like if he had to roll out, I feel like he would have a better advantage if he ended up having to actually pick up a, uh, whether it's the running back or whoever is actually going out for a route, if the quarterback rolled and he's in that position. I have seen them drop Dante Fowler in his own blitz as well, but it just his skill is so much better utilized. Just going after the passer okay and just trying to beat the tackle to the edge and he's so fast that he's where you're most valuable and you could try to out scheme the other team but at the end of the day like him doing that is better than any scheme they can come up with so you don't think from like a strong back linebacker standpoint that he could line up on that side with his power and his speed and either crush the running back or crush the quarterback you'd get some matchup problems on play actions because he's probably not that great at reading the tight end, like the keys we talked about earlier. He's probably not great at watching a tight end at the snap and then trying to decide if he's blocking or running a route or blocking for a second and then releasing on a route. And then now you're chasing a tight end. He might be dragging across the field. So those are kind of some things that he's probably not too familiar with. Athletically, you could probably line him up there and figure out a way for it to work. Definitely. But from like a playbook standpoint, but that's like, way too much. It doesn't way, seem like something that the coaches would do. Okay, All right, fair enough. Not, I mean, they could, but it doesn't seem like something that they would do because they would have to teach him a lot of new things. I was just thinking lack of depth, and he's not a starter mm-hmm. in his current spot. No, I mean, so, you I know, mean if, if you're playing Madden, you find a way to get him on the field. It, so it was not from we, Madden, for the <laughs> record, but <laughs> it could have been. <laughs> Back to uh, Blair Brown. Who would back him up? Would a, like Manasse Hungalu, I could be butchering his name, back him up? Because after um, Lecrae, I mean, I mean, who who is your backups? After I mean, Lecrae, we know him, we know his name and everything, but after that, there's not like a whole lot of like we have a decent amount of linebackers right now on the roster, but I mean, none of them I I mean come off the sheet to me that I've either either heard of or really don't know much about them. Uh, but Hungalu seemed to get a little bit of buzz when we did pick him up. I mean, that's so. what Joey was talking about when we first started talking about him tonight is there's no depth at all. Yeah. Uh, you're And even our starter, Blair Brown, late round pick, and uh, the next guy up to me is Jacobs, who we drafted this year, who was a late round pick and as a rookie. So, I don't know. And my only thought is maybe they pick up someone off the trash heap during preseason, you know, when guys start getting cut. But even then, rosters can stay – pretty large up until after the fourth preseason game so if you're yeah. waiting on that strategy you are uh waiting awfully late in the game to pick up a guy to be on your team basically the first week of the actual regular season yeah and that's, that's why i mentioned earlier i mean i really think that is the spot on the team where we're relying on the rest of the people around them 
to make it stronger and just like hoping and praying that nobody gets hurt. I mean, sure, quarterback, but Bortles has been, I mean, he's shown that he is super healthy and he'll play hurt if need be, and he's way better than serviceable hurt. And if not, you could probably grab somebody from somewhere if you needed a quarterback. But, I mean, I think that spot is our weakest point on the team. All the more reason for them to – I mean, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse here, but all the more reason for them to call pause, And I think. You know, why not? Why not? It has to be him, man. I mean, I, it has to be. Again, we, and we've said this before, you know, not, not to repeat ourselves, but I think all of us in this room and most Jags fans would feel, would feel more confident – and excited with pause on the field than Blair Brown at this point. I mean, again, he, he you know, could, we're not privy to the information that the coaches have. So, you know, they might love Blair Brown for all, for all we know, but, you know, we've seen what pause can do. We see what he means to a team, not just in his physical play, but what he brings to a locker room, what he, what he can teach guys. I'd like to see him. He put miles Jack under his wing last year, do the same thing for, for Blair Brown this year and uh, let him take the reins next year. But, or, you know, let them sub out snaps. I don't know. But I just think – I don't know. I, I just think Paw still has gas left in the tank. I wonder if there's, like, issues with Paws with him not wanting to play. Maybe injury issues. Like concussion maybe stuff. Maybe concussion stuff. Kid. I mean, because I feel like everyone agrees that he's probably better than an option we have. And they probably have reached out to him. But it just kind of seems like Paws is done to me. Well, I mean, if you look at the yeah. amount of tackles he's had, which he's one of our biggest tacklers over the past few seasons, it'd be hard to imagine that he doesn't have some kind of concussion issue at this point. I mean, it's almost impossible. That and, like, for a guy like him to voluntarily, uh, quote, unquote, voluntarily that yeah. we know of, go into retirement – when he just came off of his first playoff win. Yeah. I mean, that's that's crazy. I mean, especially with how strong the defense is coming back, you would think that that's not the time to retire. You're going to give it one at least one more year to try out and then retire. So, I mean, that that is a good point. The last the last time I could find him having any sort of concussion was 2013. Well, that's reported though. I mean, <laughs> yeah, a, a guy you know like Paz, <laughs> man, I mean, that guy's he's only going to report it if it's like evident he like stumbled off the field or didn't know where he was at. I mean, he's going to come off the field, be old school that's and like point. shake his head and then come back out there and finish the game. But I don't think Tovin would have thrown that little teaser out there if because he would have known if Paz that was why he retired. They're obviously yeah. close. I really w- think he would have. So it kind of it just baffles me, man. I, I don't get why we're relying on Blair Brown. This I mean, could, bottom line. This could be just form hopping too, but it always boggled my mind how many people didn't like Paws. Like, it is insane. Like, a, a bunch of, like, fan base online and stuff. I mean, majority of them, for whatever reason, didn't like him. But he was phenomenal. Like, that guy was well, a beast of a center – he was, but he'd get blown over the middle in the seam by somebody who was faster than he he'd was. He'd get blown in coverage, but, but I mean, a, yeah, lot in of, coverage. a lot of middle linebackers do. But sure. He had so many tackles. I mean, that guy would yeah. lead tackles every year. Here's, here's what he said about retirement. He said, I didn't, I'm, I'm quoting him right here out of an article. I didn't want to retire. I wanted to keep playing. But there's a big difference between what I want and what's right. The way my body felt at the end of last season, I knew I was reaching the point where I would either break down or physically not be able to play the way I want to play. I knew I was going to miss a play that I would have made last season or been outrun on a play. I wanted to avoid that at all costs. I would rather go out a year too early than one play too late. So, well, I mean, if he's if he's feeling that way after like 40% of the snaps, then good for him. I mean, I guess, you know, got on top as opposed to be pushed out maybe. I mean, I, I, yeah, that's a good point. He wasn't really in a – primary role either yeah no but at the same time i would still pick up the phone and call him and say yeah you know, yeah, at hey, least come the, in and maybe they have yeah maybe he just doesn't want to be a you know a backup like in terms of uh adding depth he doesn't want to be on the bench he, if he's going to be on the team he wants to be on the field which i get that you know you, you played that long you want to play yeah to be on the bench too that's a, it's a lot of work and a lot of time throughout that season too i mean just to come back and just I mean, if you're not wanting to just be a player coach, essentially, if, he's, if he is wanting to just go home and be with his family and stuff, I mean, to just sit on the bench, I mean, I, he if he comes back, he's going to want to play yeah, and, and I mean, play full out. So More power to him for that. I mean, I, I would just love to see him. And, and maybe when they're throwing the pads on in the actual preseason practices, we'll hear something. But I'd just love to hear something good about Blair Brown from somebody. So Donald Payne, who was signed by the Jaguars after last year's draft as an unrestricted free agent, has been receiving all of the middle inside linebacker snaps while Miles Jack has been gone from OTAs with the first team. So that's a guy, 
217 pounds, really not even that big. He played at Stetson. He's 23. Um, he was he was originally picked up by the Ravens and then cut, and then the Jaguars picked him up. He's been receiving all of the first-team snaps. So when you think about a guy who we haven't even been talking about, he's a guy that's been running with the first team. Six foot, 215. He's going to be our, our run supper. 5'11". 5'11". <laughs> I mean, You're he, an inch off. Uh, yeah, apparently this report's a little uh, Yikes. favorable towards well, the, him. I the, mean, middle, the middle linebacker in our defense really is more of a versatile player than it is a run stuffer. That but, Sam backer, the strong side backer, is more of your run stuffer in our defense. Well, sure, but this is the guy that's going to be the strong lo- side linebacker, right? Well, he's going to be in the middle, so he's going to be always lined up. Pay attention, Joey. Yeah. So well, I thought always, that was Miles Jack, man. I'm confused. It here. is Miles Jack. He is. He said Miles Jack hasn't been in OTAs except till I think today. He he returned uh, full okay. full out. But I, Donald Payne was the guy getting. Oh, all sorry. Of this. Well, yeah. that made me assume that if that guy was being plugged in, he was the the first guy to get maybe the other position. I no, I'm just thinking. I where I, I guess where I was going with that, and I was is I was going to say the team probably keeps five or six linebackers after the last preseason game. Who who do you think those people are? So we know for sure Miles Jack, Telvin Smith, Blair Brown, McCray. Lorente McCray. And we'll just say we all agree McCray, but he could be cut. To, you know, I think the, you have to theoretically. Keep him at, you could, but we'll, but we'll just say we all agree that, though, yeah. right? Okay. So that's four. So re- really they're keeping two more linebackers. I think Hungalu stays on. So keep in mind, I mean, I, I like Hungalu. He's one of my favorite guys. But keep in mind, we drafted Leon Jacobs. And Donald Payne is getting the first team reps. And his last name is Payne. And his last name is <laughs> Payne. That's got to count for yes. something playing linebacker. Yes. One of his middle name is Bring the. <laughs> <laughs> How do you follow that up? <laughs> I mean, uh, that that's the scary part, man. And that's where you, I guess you kind of got to trust the upper management and their scouts and what they know about football and who they're drafting. Because, I mean, dude, none of those guys stand out at all. I mean, they don't jump off the page for any reason or any shape or form. So, I mean, it, you can't have every position group be great. And it seems like that's, again, our weak one from a depth standpoint for sure. I don't want them – I don't know I don't know if I want them to be great, but I just kind of want them to have some experience. Like, you can't go get a well, – Well, we don't, though. That's the thing. I mean, at this point, we don't. I mean, it's, it's That's there. what I'm saying. We have no experience. I mean, we do have one guy on the team, uh, Brooks Ellis, who's been bounced around for three years in the league. I mean, he has the most experience outside of – are starting two, and it's he's probably won't make the team honestly. So it's just kind of I I would I wish we had a little more experience. I don't really care about talent, but well, you know, and to that point, you know, there was a guy Michael Kendricks who was a six year vet playing for the Eagles. They cut him, and he was out there for more than a day or two. The Jaguars had every opportunity to pick him up. Maybe they tried, and couldn't agree on a number. Maybe not. He ends up signing a one year deal with Cleveland. So it's mm. not like. I would have to imagine there the Jags could have had a better offer on the table than that. And they didn't go after him, or at least they didn't sign him. Instead, he signs that one-year deal with Cleveland. I mean, that's another guy that they could have brought in. So I just I just continue to wonder, what do they know that we don't? I mean, obviously they know a whole lot more than, than we do. <laughs> yeah. But in terms of, you know, just what they're seeing from Blair Brown in practices, what they saw last year, what they see on film, they must believe in this guy. I mean, they must because they have not – address the issue beyond a sixth round pick in the draft this year so to me you know joey your kind of mantra for the team is the management hasn't steered us wrong so far and that must be you know what's happening here is this is this is what they're going to do so hey i guess we have to trust that blair brown might be the guy i would love nothing more than when this season's over go man brown played amazing we got you know we got our guy in the sixth (laughs) round last year to, to fill in um you know that space but at this point it's that's just being a i feel like it's kind of being a total homer isn't it really it absolutely is i mean i believe that for the majority of the team but i do think this is the one spot where you know hey you get you have a budget you can only spend so much money so many places and if i'm an offensive coordinator on another team i mean what spot of that defense am i attacking i feel like where we were weak was in linebacker anytime anyone beat us was on our linebackers yeah and it's gotten even worse (laughs) yeah yeah, I mean, if if Brown is that great, they would have played him a little bit more. He would have had more snaps last yeah, year, well, with well, or without pause. He would have he would have had some more snaps. I don't know though, because he was a rookie. Were you taking snaps away from pause? I don't think so. Well, let him I think maybe year more. two is the year that you do that. 
on to play devil's advocate to myself, uh, you know, he said we <laughs> got worse. Well, did we? If Paz is saying that he his body was kind of breaking down, he didn't want to be a step slower. Now we've got a guy that's younger, all right, healthier, because he just hasn't had that the, that many years of abuse in the NFL. And I would I would guess that Blair Brown is faster than Paz, you know, so maybe we didn't get worse. Maybe we did get better just based on youth alone. Knowledge of the position, that'll come, but – I don't know. Are we being too presumptuous here? It, you know, I'm just thinking out loud about it with with pause and reading his quotes. You know, it sounds like, you know, like like Joey said, for 40 percent of the snaps to feel like that, yeah, maybe he was more banged up than we we realized. Well, based off of where we are right now, where we could potentially be going to a Super Bowl team, what do y'all value more, youth or knowledge? It's a good question. I mean, if if we if we didn't have the option of go becoming having like a a solid team that we can make a deep playoff run or super bowl run i i would be saying youth but where we're at right now i would say it's knowledge in that position because i mean at this point barry church is our like senior defensive team member right well like, mm. like campbell yeah and campbell well, campbell but i mean that's uh, we're talking line verse right secondary right. yeah you're right yeah i yeah. would say here's the thing that's a good question but here here's my take we're not playing this in the super bowl week one you know that that is way down the road. It's kind of like if you look in the uh, NBA playoffs. They were talking a lot about Jason Tatum, the forward for the Celtics. He was a rookie, but by the time the playoffs roll around, you're not a rookie anymore. You've played an entire season, and so you you have to stop with the rookie talk. I think with Blair Brown, by the time that they get to the playoffs, or even by the time they get to December, he's going to know what he's doing, or he should, you know. And if if he doesn't, then they they swung and missed on him big time. So I would take, listen, you got to cover the field. You know, you can know where you're supposed to be and know what you're supposed to do till the cows come home. But if you can't get from point A to point B in the amount of time that you're supposed to, it doesn't matter how much you know. So I say go with the guy that can get there and let him learn a little bit on the curve. And by the way, you have a top-tier defense supporting you while you learn. But he's got mandatory training camp or whatever it's called, mini camp coming up in a, in next week, training camp preseason to and then even the first month or two to really develop and learn that position so i i personally i I like the question a lot knowledge versus youth i'll take the youth give me give me the guys that are going to continue to be fast and uh he's you know he's got a a lot to prove as well it's not like he's making a ton he was a late round pick so he's playing for that second contract like like most players in the nfl so he's got a lot to prove and i think let's let's see how he responds and i i would probably agree but at the same time i mean you got to win those early games because i mean a team like i mean i don't know about everyone else but a team like tennessee right now they kind of worry me because i mean if we're going up against them and they they end up squeaking away one more win than us i mean that's a playoff they added depth and they added some good players this this off season so i mean they could definitely come out being strong i think they added players but i don't think they added anybody that's going to tip the scales that Mm. where if blair brown has a bad game like we should beat tennessee i I'm with Joey. Well, we both can make the playoffs. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What would you say? I'm with Joey here. <laughs> All right, just for the um, record. Jason I am said with that. Joey. One more time? I am with Joey <laughs> here. Right. I think that at this position, I would rather have experience over athleticism. Because if you're too slow to make a play, it's not the end of the world. Because you're, if you're smart enough, you can put yourself in position to not be killed by the play. If you're inexperienced and athletic, you could be totally out of position and give up a touchdown. So... I'm. I think there's some positions that where I would take athleticism, but at this position, that what we're asking them to do, I'd rather have someone that's just not going to get destroyed because it's the weakest spot on the field. Yeah, and my concern with that is, yes, we do have an elite defense around him, and they can make up for a lot of mistakes. But if they have to keep thinking about covering for his mistakes, that could affect the entire defense around him. But again, back to the fact that the coaching staff has not made a bad real bad decision in the past couple of years. I'm going to bank on that. And I'm going to pray to the football gods, just like quarterback, that there's no injuries in that position spot because, dude, we well, were wrecked if there is. It's, it's something we haven't brought up, you know, the injuries. And if we look at where the position that the linebackers were in after the Bills game, Paws was out with an abdominal injury. Telvin Smith was out with an ankle injury, not practicing. Blair Brown was in a walking boot from spraining his ankle in practice. This was the the playoff game? This was this was the week leading up to the Steelers game. So for okay. practice, those players were not practicing. 
Backup linebacker Donald Payne was on the injury report for quadriceps not practicing. The only two healthy linebackers were Relente McCray and Miles Jack. So for that whole week leading up to the Steelers, we were decimated at that position with injuries. And I had forgotten that Blair Brown was injured for a lot of last year. Like he played through injuries and he miss, would miss games. Um, I know he did hurt his ankle pretty bad. Yeah, in like January, I think he got a sprained ankle. Yeah, because he, he had a good game against the Seahawks. That was like what everyone thought was going to be his coming out party when he had that sack on Russell Wilson. But he, he got hurt after that. And so like Joey's right, he brings up the injury point. Linebacker is a position that gets hurt a lot. We like said safeties. the exact same thing we were talking about the secondary, though. Like, if if uh, Ramsey goes down, God forbid. Right. I mean. But we have but we have precedence of linebackers being hurt on our team. Like, Ramsey and Boye stayed relatively healthy last year. None of our linebackers did besides Miles Jack, ironically, playing over 1,000 snaps because he was the one with the injury concerns coming right. into the season. Right. But – we were hurt last year at the end of the year. I think at that, at that point in the season, when you're talking about the second round of the playoffs, like how are you not hurt? As yeah, a yeah I think well, if you're missing practice, is. you're, yeah, you're but hurt. Smith, but Smith yeah. played that game even though he was, he right, was out yeah. of practice. Yeah. I don't know. If, if I'm the coach and you are you have a stubbed toe you're t- and you're t- it's Telvin Smith, it's like don't practice. Yeah. Like yeah. What, what are you going to gain? What's you know, the benefit you, at that point? Stay in the meetings. You know, know what our strategy is going to be, but rest. Well, rest, I think, at that point of the year is way more important than practice. Well, the, I mean, the other part, though, too, with Telvin, I mean, a lot of people get these, but he did have a concussion last year, too. There are trends that show that once you have one, it's easier to get. I'm not really worried about him, but, I mean, that's another thing that he had. Well, don't worry. You can't lower your head and tackle this year, so that right. won't happen. Yeah, I yeah. actually don't know. Can you tackle? Um, Sort of. you got to like, wrap up. Flag now. you got to wrap, okay. oh, okay. wrap up and fall back. Yeah. Just tickle him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, maybe Blair Brown is that much of a stud healthy, and McCray is our depth. I mean, yeah. maybe that's what they're banking on. And again, I mean, what else? What else are we gonna say? Yeah. That's I it. think, and it's important it is what it to know that, like, in my head, I feel like I almost treat Blair Brown like he's a rookie, but he's not. He's been in the league a year, mm-hmm. which whether you're hurt or you're not, you play a little bit or a lot. That goes a long way yeah. in your progression and learning a position. So he does have that going for him. He has a year under his belt playing in the NFL. So. Yeah, you know, it's it's as we always do because we're we love the Jags and we're always going to try and be optimistic. The more that we've talked about it, the more I'm kind of like, we're good. Yeah, Blair Brown's <laughs> going to make the Pro Bowl. You know, <laughs> problem solved. It's all fixed. Hey, now. pride of the Jags. He's going in, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give him ten years. Not yeah. with Joey standards. He doesn't let anybody in. No. Yes, the only Fred standards. Taylor yeah. allowed. Pretty much. Fred 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 <laughs> so, so uh, only so much agreement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we can all uh, agree that we're set with Telvin and Miles. We love both of them as as players and as Jags. Blair Brown is the question mark of the group. Obviously, depth is another question mark. But you know, if if, if they stay healthy, um, we'll see what happens. You guys got I mean, Telvin and, and Miles are just so good. I know. I mean, they're so they are, good. They really they are. are. They're Amazing. they are fun to watch. Yeah. yeah. So they're, I mean, it, honestly, outside of that, I mean, somebody just has to not be bad. You know. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. don't have that high of a standard outside of those, yeah. that yeah. spot. And that's a, that's a high bar for any third linebacker to measure up to. So just yeah, it's a that's a great. Just don't be bad. Yeah. yeah. Be good. Don't make other guys have to play two positions. Yeah. Right. You know, you play your position and let them take care of what they're going to do, which is fly as, around the field. As Belichick would say, do your job. Do yeah, your job. Do your exactly. job. Didn't Bradley say that too? Wasn't it like that his it, big? It's a popular coach thing. Has it? I think Belichick was the one that like started it. Okay. That being said, like I, out of all the defense, I'm most ex- I love Dante Fowler, but I'm most excited about seeing Miles Jack this year. I feel like this is like going to be a big, big move for him. Yeah, same here. I mean, he had I a agree. great year last year. I only I expect him to only progress this year. I I really am interested to see what happens. I think maybe one of these undrafted guys might sneak on the team. You guys know I'm a big Hungalu fan. But, I mean, they signed a lot. I mean, they that's the position they probably filled the most with and for the undrafted free agents were linebackers. I yeah. mean, they're, they signed guys from all over the place. They signed Division Two guys. I mean. Anybody from App State? Uh, no, no one from App State. Unfortunately not. Uh, uh, you have a guy like Reggie Hunter who's a, a small guy from North Carolina Central. Hmm. Not a small guy. He's from a small school. He's 5'11", 240. I mean, he's a big guy, and he, he actually has good ball skills. I mean, all of his highlights, he he has good ball skills. And, you know, you can actually go on our Twitter, and you can find highlights of all of these undrafted free agents on our team. I should go on our Twitter. So you can just search any of these Pretty linebackers' cool. names from Hungalu to Reggie Hunter to Leon Jacobs. Uh, we don't have any of Deion King because he wasn't a rookie last year. 
Uh, he's been bouncing around. And there's none of Brooks Ellis either. But everyone else, we have some highlight videos. We actually, to James's point, we're talking about how good Telvin was. Rewatching Telvin Smith's season highlights because we posted them on our Twitter today in honor of our linebacker talk. You forgot you. I forgot how good he was. Like I knew he was good, but watching him make plays, how hard he hits, the way he like makes plays on the ball, he goes for the ball. Like if the running back's running and he's held up, I mean he's like punching at the ball, trying to get it out. Like I love that about Telvin. Yeah. And I'm I'm lucky. I'm I'm glad that he fell in the draft to us. That was dude, there, there's awesome. nothing about him that I don't like. No, Tel- Every aspect of him as a player and a person, I love. No teammate, player. I mean, dude. Tovin is the man. He is. He's awesome. And I'm saying that about a Florida State guy. So it's all right. That's that's like ten times as impressive. When you when you get his jersey, well, first of all, when you get his jersey, and second of all, are you gonna cut it to where it's a tank top? I will tank not top cut jersey. It, I will not <laughs> cut as a tank top, but it's you know I got to get it from China because they're like. I was about to ask, are you gonna knock off or a real like thirty one? bucks? I mean, right. you know, it, it takes a while to get here. Gotcha. Just gotta come over on okay. a boat. Gotcha. All right. Well, that wraps up our talk on the linebackers. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we could probably talk more, but we're gonna cut it off there. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about where ESPN ranks the Jags in terms of winning the Super Bowl and how you should bet on them. We have a feeling you're going to be as upset as we are about that. We'll be right back in just a couple minutes. Welcome back to episode 14 of another Jags podcast. As always, before we get on to our discussion, we want to remind everyone about our social media, which we've kind of been pumping a lot tonight, especially Twitter, because Jason does an incredible job of putting all sorts of highlights and uh, film clips and stuff like that on our Twitter page. So check that out if you want uh, some more insight. You go even deeper than we go on this podcast, if you can believe that. Find us on Twitter. Go to at another Jags pod. But don't worry, we're also on Facebook and Instagram at Another Jags Podcast for both of those. Again, we want your feedback. We want questions. We want concerns. All those things. We want to hear from you. Tell us how stupid we are, how smart we are, and of course, how handsome we are. You can do all those things on social media. And as always, we're also on all the podcast uh, platforms, SoundCloud, iTunes, and all the other ones that I don't know the names of that are out there. You can find us there as well because... We are the number one off-season Jaguars podcast. So uh, we finished up our talk on linebackers. We're going to switch now to ESPN put out their football power index, which is a fancy term for basically saying how they rank teams coupled with how Vegas ranks teams. I'm just going to – that's at the most elementary way of explaining it. That's what it is. It's come out, and this, this is interesting because now, as we talked about a few weeks ago, I don't remember what episode it was, uh, we talked about the legalization of sports betting. So now this kind of takes on a new life because it's more real now. It's, it's legal. Uh, you can do this. And I'll just ask you guys, because I'm not sure if you've looked it up. I have. I have it right in front of me. Where, of all the, the 32 teams in the NFL, do you think the Jaguars land on this list of best odds of going to the Super Bowl, winning the Super Bowl? say as a jaguar fan i would think seventh okay as a objective better joey where do you think i I would put it right there okay seven jason are you cheating right now no okay no maybe no he's just on it he's on our twitter account admiring his his twitter (laughs) his his twitter looking at all the followers and all that i think you said handsome it's a selfie of his tank top personally (laughs) that's right that's what i'm doing right now jason's definitely gone casual tonight he wins the casual award tonight which i respect (laughs) It's uh, we, we were talking off the podcast. Is that a wife beater? Joe, he had no, this is uh, dead this on is the a, podcast. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, keep going. It's it's a wife beater with stains on it. <laughs> Actually, it's not a stain. It's a hole. Okay. <laughs> and it's, a, and it's a and it's a Volcom tank top. Okay. So, oh, okay. It's my not bad. A yeah. wife beater. Hey, stand correct. But Joey had one of my favorite quotes of all time when he said, "Hey, it's summer." That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's yeah. summer. <laughs> Valid hey, point. That's right. You know, it's tank top season. It is. So, um. Y- I would if say if that's true, then it's summer for Joey year round. I respect it's tank that. top Joey. I respect there, there, that. There's literally two months where you can't wear tank tops in Jacksonville, Florida. It's part of the reason I live here. Yeah, that's true. Me too. But the hat that was throwing me off, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> but I would put the Jaguars. Okay, I think Vegas is going to have us around uh, eight. I if if I was a Jaguar fan, I'm putting it around four. As a better, I would put them around four as well. If I were creating the odds the way Vegas were, I would put them around fourth. Okay. Robert? 
Um, I think I would go between five and six if it, if I was picking. If it's ESPN, I would probably put us at like twenty two. Because let's be honest, <laughs> yeah, I mean, not really. Well, I mean, you're no just one in national source. Yeah. No one in national media is is ever really putting us right. high. So it's true. I mean, okay, so. Remember, this is not Vegas odds. This is the this is ESPN coupling with Vegas. They're determining it by uh, you know offensive, defense, and special teams results from last year and their expectations going into this year. It's got to throw okay. like strength of schedule in as well, right? Strength, well, yeah, I guess I guess so. Oh, I hope so. Uh, Do you think they looked that much into it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If Vegas they're throwing does. that in at this point yeah. with the schedule <laughs> out, yeah, I would which think so. and I'll say this is a, this is a subject for another day. But to me, strength of schedule. Is such an overrated thing to uh, look at I agree. because it fluctuates from, it's so from season to season, um, and that's that's where the NFL makes his money is on parity. But that's a whole other thing. Anyway, so Joey, just real quick, you said around seven. Yeah. Okay, Jason, you said you gave uh, your typical Jason. You gave like ten answers. Yes. Which exactly. one are you, you going to say? No, actually, on you said eight because he couldn't agree with me with seven. I said so, eight. Yeah. Okay. I said eight. And you, I'm going to go five. Five. Okay. Five. They have the Jaguars at fourteen. Mm. And I will say this. Of the AFC, I'll just I'm just going to read them off to you, okay? Number one, anyone want to take a wild guess? Uh, Patriots. Yes, Browns. New England's number oh. one. Philadelphia's number two. Which, by the way, I heard today uh, reports are saying that they believe Carson Wentz will be ready for opening day. Sure, nothing wrong with that. Those uh, two are fair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying. I think it's insane that Wentz, who tours ACL in December, is going to be ready for a game in September. That's yeah. wild. So we go on Minnesota three. We're good for him. I love Wentz. Uh, three is actually you're, y'all are going to love this. A team that. We did not beat just once, mm. but the twice what? last year in their house. They have mm. Pittsburgh at three. <laughs> Pittsburgh's wow. on a downward slope. I Dude, mean, they, Pittsburgh's getting old. It doesn't surprise that, me. That's yeah. a crazy town. Doesn't surprise, doesn't me. surprise me either, but there's no way I would put money on Pittsburgh. I, not I at agree. three. I think they're. I think I think Cleveland's going to be nipping at their heels. It's I still a, think Pittsburgh's going to win the division. It's no. a, It's kind of like a. But it's not going to be a runaway. I know it's kind of a touchy subject, but they lost their best player to injury. Like yeah. Ryan Shazier was their best player. Well, well not he wasn't better than Antonio Brown. I mean, okay, we'll say he was the best defensive or player. Le'Veon we'll say Bell. their best defensive player. Okay, yeah. okay. What's that? What are you saying, Joey? Or Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell's still on the team. Ryan Shazier, no, no, best not player. Ryan Shazier was good. He was very. He was. He was, he was very good. He was a top he was five good. linebacker in the NFL for sure. Yes. But Antonio Brown's the, the he's the best player That's on the team. Uh, but, any, but I still think they were thirteen and three last year in the regular thirteen and three, and they yeah. really should have been fourteen and two because they got hosed against New England. Yeah, that blown call yep. was oh man, the non catch from Jesse James. Yes, uh, so they, I mean, thirteen and three, fourteen and two. I, I just don't see them repeating that this year. I really, I, don't. Mean, I definitely think they're in the top ten, but three, three, yeah, four, the Rams, which I, I can see that I have them in my top five. Okay, and then five is Minnesota. Okay. Let's okay. So the, well. really, the the one that I would sub out is Pittsburgh. Yeah. If you if you read off those five, and even you could even put Jags at five and bump the Rams in Minnesota up to three and four, I would be okay with that. You know. But okay, so let's keep. Who's going. the six team? Six team is New Orleans. Uh, that's. Mm. Uh, I throw that in there as well. Yeah, they're good too. They are good. <laughs> um, Green Bay is seven. Which Ooh. I think that's high. Yeah, I mean, after last year, I mean, who knows where they're going to be at? Dude, their defense is they were horrible. Right. They were really I mean, hurt though last year. They yeah, were but very, that, really that's hurt. That's exactly and they the added point. Jimmy Graham. They did, but to Joey, like Joey said, they have no. De- they they to me are the Colts of the NFC. They had as, as they weren't that bad. No, I mean like they have this amazing quarterback, and they have done the worst job building a team okay. around him. That's why their quarterback's arguing for his contract right now and trying to add like player acquisition into it because he feels so crappy about what they've done in the past few years. I don't, I don't know. Not to mention they've been in such a winnable division. Yes. The Colts, the, it's not like the Colts have added players. Like The Packers have added weapons around him. They just keep getting hurt. Like They keep getting hurt for the season. It's, Who have they added? I mean, Jordy Nelson is a premier wide receiver. Three um, years ago. Yeah, three yeah. years. They've well, had him he, for a while. He was before he tore his ACL. That's what I'm saying. Dude, they yeah. had nobody in free agency. Then uh, Randall Cobb was a good receiver. Then he got hurt. Who was, who's the other receiver? Uh, who Devontae have they added, Adams. Who have they added in free agency in the past five Randall years? Randall Cobb was good, but he was not. He was he, good, though. He was yeah, good but, because of Rodgers. He got hurt, though. That's what I'm saying. These guys are getting hurt, and then they're just getting unlucky. Well, remember the Jags were, tried to go after him in free agency, yeah. and they didn't. And it ended up like Marquise Lee had a better season than him comparatively anyway. Yeah. You know? So. Well, I'm um, big on Marquise. I, I think Randall Cobb is a uh, result of Aaron Rodgers being his quarterback more Probably, than him being yeah. a good a good yeah. receiver. Devontae Adams, though, they added Jimmy Graham. 
Adams is good. They have never given him a running back. That's that's no fair. running back. And, and besides Clay Matthews, who he, is he just broke his nose declining? Yeah, in a softball <laughs> game. You know where what do they have on defense? I'm just saying, like with a guy like Aaron Rodgers, I'd the love best to play quarterback the in the NFL. They <laughs> yeah. their organization has done nothing to help him out. Not yeah, really. They should be a perennial playoff team, whether Jordy Nelson goes down with a torn ACL or not. And they should have a couple of Super Bowls under their belt in the past few years. Yeah. I mean, easily. And that's that's the same thing. If you look at Andrew Luck, after they drafted him, I mean, they've done just the worst job ever building a team around him. And the way I look at it is if the Jags are playing them, I'm excited. Who's that? The, the Jags Colts? are playing Green, Green Bay. Bay. I'm oh, excited. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not scared at all. No. That'd be a fun game. To watch actually to see Rodgers go up against our corners yeah. would be uh, would be really fun. Um, okay, so let's move on though. So we have Green Bay at seven, Falcons are at eight, Fair which enough. I don't hate that. I, th- no. I think mm-hmm. I think they're gonna be a lot better this year than they were last year. They you know had a couple bad breaks. Okay, here's one that I, that I take issue with. There's no way. There's just no way. Actually, the next, well, all four, six, Carolina, and they have at nine. Carolina Man, Panthers. Carolina's not good. San Francisco 49ers at 10. I, which can is kind, such, I can kind of see that. Oh, come on. No, not they're, until they're, they they're, not until he actually does something. Garoppolo had 6 games at the, I mean towards the end of the season. I mean, no, I mean, there's no way. You can't put them that high yet. They're in my top 10. Yeah. Okay, this next team, I will say of every team in the AFC, every single team in the AFC, this is the team that scares me the most for the Jags. Do they Anyone rank want Houston, to take a Houston before us? No. No, it's not. Thankfully, Houston. I'm talking about in terms of like if we have if the Jags play this team in the playoffs, I will be nervous. Titans? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Anyone? Uh, Anyone? No. I don't even tell you. For this is just me. Personally. Chargers. Chargers. Yeah. Yeah. Chargers scare me. Philip Rivers. Even yeah, though the Jags beat them last year, <laughs> so that was a scary oh, game. Man. Everyone was saying that at during the season last year too. Like we yeah. don't want to yeah. see this team. No, and they got playoffs. hot at the end, yeah. and they and they just completely Plus, choked. Until he retires, he's 16. got our number, man. I mean, he, he lights does. us well, up. Well, it's got, because he's a fast. He throws fast. I mean, yeah. it, historically with this defense and previously, uh, teams that throw quick on us. Typically beat us. I mean, that's why Brady. I mean, mm-hmm. even though Brady's great, but that's his whole deal with us. Melvin Gordon had a good year last year. They have Keenan Allen, great receiver, one of the best in the league, honestly. Then on the other side of the ball, Joey Bosa. They just drafted Derwin James. They have uh, Casey Hayward. I mean, they're they got some players on that team. Melvin Ingram. Melvin Ingram. Yeah. yeah. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, Melvin that, Ingram. That's course. one team I did not think about as far as everything other Derwin than Derwin James. Like yeah, that's Rivers cool. owning us. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's legit. I mean, I'm, I I'm, a little, I'm worried about them. I'm worried about them. Their tight end Hunter Henry did just tear his ACL. Though. Yes, out for the year. Yeah. Which you know, who knows? Maybe talking about calling play old players and bringing them back, they could call Antonio Gates. <laughs> you know how? <laughs> yeah. You know that's not exactly a. He's good for five hundred and five. Yeah, exactly. But he's still got it, man. Okay, so then let's move on. So we have the Chargers at eleven. At twelve, this is another one that I just—I mean, it's a—it's a complete ESPN job right here. Is the Dallas Cowboys? <laughs> <laughs> How? Because it's Dallas. Yeah, I mean that's it's the only Dallas. reason why I can't think of any other reason they're they're not twenty. I mean Zeke does make them a, a totally different team, and he missed six games last year. He's going to be back for all of them. Dude, they have an offensive but, line, Zeke and Dak, and, and they have Allen Hearns as their number one. Hearns is the number one. Every receiver. every team in the NFL has one good player, and Jason Witten retired. They don't really have a defense either. Yeah, I they mean, don't. I would put them like at 23, 24. Like I, they, talk, they're about, not talk, they're not going to be good. You this talk year. about five in the box this year. I mean, jeez. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. Uh, anyway, okay, so they're 12. <sighs> Here's another one. Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, what? Playing with a second year, never started except for one garbage game quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. I mean, I mean they have a good team around him. Nothing Andy Reid. No team Andy Reid's on scares me. Well, again, though, I mean, you talk about Jimmy G, at least he started some games and he's never lost a start. I right. mean, this guy's done nothing. No. And they're acting like he's the second coming of – Whoever Montana, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. No, I, I mean that that one really confuses me. You got you know, Cream Hunt had a great year. I'm trying to think of other players. They got rid of Peters on uh, on defense, so I just I don't know. And then you have at 14 the Jacksonville Jaguars. Again, I mean that's at- that's almost this on the bottom half of the league. 16 is the, is the midway point, so they're yeah. three spots from being on the bottom half of the league. I'll say two things. I mean, first of all, all the teams ranked above us that I disagree with are big market teams. 
So it's kind of understandable. Mm -hmm. Second of all, good chip on our shoulder. And you know, I'm all about the chip on the shoulders. So let them go into the season being PO'd that they're the 14th, whatever, and use that for locker room motivation, whatever it takes, man. I don't think that's something that that. the coaches will necessarily do, but if, but. I would, I would like, can we send this to Telvin or someone no, dude, else and say, you need to look at this and you put You don't this, think the players know? already have that cut out and like I hope so. wherever in their lockers? I mean, absolutely they do. That's, that's, a, that's a great point because the more chips that are added to the Jaguar show, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking Joey talk right now. It's yeah, but it's shoulder. legit. The Joey is. Mean, so that, is. That is just doing the Jaguars a favor. Can, absolutely. So, but I just, I just can't believe they have teams like Dallas and San Francisco, Carolina, Green Bay. In, I'm sorry, Pittsburgh at three is is is, is ridiculous. Blows my mind. I just can't. That that is to me that's just lazy. Because of record, I would I would be fine with them around six, five or six, just because of record alone. But I mean, there's no reason they should be at three when we had their number twice. We kicked them out of the playoffs. They they play in a, in a right now a weak division. Baltimore is down. The Browns are the Browns. Although I think that's going to change, and then. I mean, I think again, it, the team in it's going to take us like three or four Bengals. consecutive Bengals, years, yeah. Bengals. three or four consecutive years making the playoffs or winning a Super Bowl before we get any respect mm-hmm. whatsoever. I mean, I think it's bottom line. Out of all of those, though, the one that confuses me the absolute most is the Cowboys. Like, I really don't understand that one at all. I don't either. Like that. I mean, I, I, I don't like the San Francisco one at all either. But I mean, at least. Jimmy G had, like you said, six wins at the end of the season. I'm not worried about that. I think a lot of that was teams that weren't scheming for him the whole entire year, and he got thrown in there. But, I mean, but he could be great. I mean, I'm not saying he's not going to be, but Dallas makes no sense to me at all. It's funny you bring those two up because I'm looking at the actual Vegas odds right now, and the two teams that are tied with the Jaguars are the San Francisco 49ers and the Dallas Cowboys. So Vegas who's really the most accurate usually um, is putting them um, at 1,600. I just can't believe that. They have – think about the players that are on the Jaguars team. Who on Dallas can measure up with those guys? Here's the, here's the thing, though. They're not that far off because when, when, you, when you look at the odds to win the AFC, they're the third best odds. Right. So – they're not really saying they're going to have a problem with the AFC. Mm-hmm. They're just saying there's a lot of good teams in the NFC. But and, I mean, and everyone is saying that. They're you're saying right. the NFC is strong. Right. And, and and even on this list that I'm looking at on ESPN, there's only you have Pittsburgh, the Chargers. I'm missing someone. New England. Uh, New England, yeah. And then uh, so it's it's not like oh, and Kansas City is are all ahead. So there's only three teams in the AFC ahead of the of the Jags. But at the same time, like I'm sorry, I just cannot. Even Green Bay is is amazing as Aaron Rodgers is, and he is incredible. This is a team. This is a team of team sports, and I just, mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. I we have so many good players, and and I understand completely. I mean, especially for Vegas odds wise and stuff. I mean, uh, when a I, I can't remember the exact statistic, but when a team hasn't made it into a playoff in so long, usually the first year they make it back into the playoffs, they usually don't go back in that same year. But at the same time, I mean. Based off of how we played, acquisitions of, of keeping the same team and everything. I mean, it's not like we went in and then we lost a ton of players. I mean that that one's the one that's hard for me to that we're still in the same position as Dallas and San Francisco ranking wise. Well, I think it's not so much we're losing players as like they're adding players. That's true. Like but they're adding Jimmy G. The Cowboys are adding Zeke back for the full year. Everyone kind of expects Dak Prescott to be better. It's, I mean, it's funny because, you know, James had asked, are the Cowboys that much better than the Jaguars? I would say no, but just think about the national media's perspective on Dak Prescott versus Bortles when in reality what it really is. Like the national media thinks – they think Dak Prescott is miles ahead of Bortles when, like, people that watch football know that Bortles might be better. And, right. and that's the only thing out of all of these different articles I've read about our team and everything, Bortles is the only reason – the sole reason we're ranked as low as we are on any of these things, which is weird because, I mean, I know he hasn't been great for us, but he, I mean, he has not been. He's been a middle of the road quarterback. I mean, and how many, there's been tons of middle of the road quarterbacks that have won Super Bowls. I'd be willing to say majority of them have been a uh, middle of the road quarterback. So to him to be the sole reason that we keep getting ranked lower, it, it's just, 
crazy. Yeah, that's the bottom line. I mean, if you look at that list, the, other than Mahomes, I mean, is there another quarterback on that list that hasn't shown himself as an elite quarterback or at least an elite prospect except for Bortles? No. I, no. I, I, if you put Aaron Rodgers on the Jaguars, I, they're probably the favorite. Absolutely. So it does boil down to the fact of can yeah. Bortles carry the team to the Super Bowl? And that's a whole other conversation. It's, I mean, like Robert said, you don't have to. No. You really don't have to have a good quarterback. No. I mean, I, I agree, and I think he can good do – Good defenses win all the time. I think he's going to continue getting look better. Who, look what quarterback won the Super Bowl just this year. It was a backup. Backup, yeah. You know, I mean, it's crazy. And then you had Case Keenum quarterbacking a team to the NFC Champions. It, it was it was very evident that, to that truth. Yeah. We got a, we got a good defense – we got a great running. Uh, we got a great defense. We got a great running back. We should have a really good offensive line this year. That's all you need to win Super Bowls. How many Super Bowls have been won off of just Dude, that? If you, if you don't think I mean, that's he, that's huge. If you don't think he can be better than Brad Johnson or get to the point of Flacco in the playoffs, then you're not watching him as a quarterback. Was it, did Trent Dilfer win one too? I'm sorry, so. Dilfer, not uh, Johnson. Yeah. You're correct. But Brad Johnson won one too. Yeah, though. he did. With did he? Well, he, both of them suck. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> So I mean I don't, I don't know it just it just continues to to add fuel to the fire to the Jaguars fire which I'm okay with. Yeah, we uh, need that man. I mean, we're used we, to being dis- got to stand in that position. It's, it's and enormous. we will always it's be enormous. until we win three Super Bowls. We can win we can win Super Bowl this year and they're still going to be like ah they have no shot of making it. We'll be ranked fifteenth next year. I don't know. I think if they win one. It's hard to argue with winning a Super Bowl. I mean that's just so hard to do. So it's you can't you can't ignore it after that. But you know, we'll see what happens. But good thing we're gonna win this year. But, yeah, but yeah, based on what you said earlier, what sixteen to one odds? Sixteen hundred or sixteen to one? Yes. That's 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 pretty strong. Yeah, that sounds like a great bargain. Maybe some people have already taken advantage of that. that looks like uh, a, we will be so, maybe, maybe they some have. Room. <laughs> maybe some people can buy <laughs> that, a new tank top. That looks, like a, uh, <laughs> that looks like a twenty five dollar a piece bet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can split quarters on this one. That's right. All right, guys, we want to thank you for listening. That wraps up uh, another Jags podcast. And, you know, you guys listening are, is the best. It's what keeps us the number one off-season Jaguars podcast. As always, you can find us on Twitter at Another Jags Pod, on Instagram or Facebook at Another Jags Podcast, and on all podcast sites out there for download when you want to listen. Um, next week, we will be talking about the running backs, so I encourage you to tune in at that point and also if you have any comments or thoughts on the running backs please post those and we'll be happy to talk about those when we meet next time around go jags